Can you export a video in the Final Cut Pro trial? Yes, you can, and here's how. First, I'll show you three ways to export a video. Then I'll walk you through the export process. And at the end of this video, I'll share a trick to export several formats at once I just discovered in only two clicks. Let's dig in. So the Final Cut Pro trial is the entire app. There aren't any limitations except the time. You can use it for 90 days. This is from Apple's website right here on limitations. It's fully functional. You can boom, export right there. So I've downloaded the trial and let's install it. I'll double click on this and I'll say continue, continue. I agree and install. Put in your password, hit enter. I'll skip this part for you. All right, there we go. Installation successful. I'll press close and yeah, let's move the installer to the trash and let's open up Final Cut Pro. There's the trial. So you'll get this little window up here talking about the trial. It lasts 90 days. If you're ready to buy it, you can click this button. If you just want to use the trial, click OK. Click continue. And there we go. We have Final Cut. I'm going to open up my library. All right, so I have a library here with a bunch of different projects in it. We'll use this for examples on exporting. So to export in a trial, open up a project. That's what I have right here in the timeline. And then I'll go up here to the share button and I'll click on that and I'll press export file. I'll go to settings and I can make changes here. I want to export as H.264 for uploading online. I'll click next and I'll add my video name and then I'll just press save. And just like that, the trial is exporting. No watermarks, no limitations. And here's the video. You can also use a keyboard shortcut. Press Command E and it will bring up the share inspector. Make your changes right here and then click next, add your name and then click save, just like before. You can also export by going up to file, select share, and then select one of these destinations and then follow the same steps as before. Later on, I'll show you a trick to export a bunch of destinations in just two clicks. So Final Cut Pro comes with some built-in share destinations. If you click on the button, you can see those right here. But if you want to add a destination, just click on the plus add destination here or open up preferences with command comma and go to destinations and you'll have those options here as well. I'm gonna do it through the share button. I'll click here, I'll click add destination. And now I have other choices here. I can do a DVD, I can export the current frame. So just an image or an image sequence. And I can also do bundles, which I'll show you later on. Let's do a custom export file. So I'll drag and drop it over to add a destination and then I can select it to make changes. I want to export for web hosting, let's say, and I want a better quality export. Then I can select my resolution. I want it to export up to 4K if possible. I like to turn this action off because right now, anytime I export, it opens up the video in QuickTime. So I typically just say save only. I don't use chapter markers, so I'll undo that as well. Okay. Now I can rename it as well. I just click on it once, it'll highlight it, and I can give it a name and press enter. So my default destination is this export file up here, but what if I want my new destination to be the default one? That's easy. I just right click on it and I select make default. Now I'll close this and anytime I press command E, it will pull up my settings for web video, as you can see here. If I want to reset my default destination, I can just right click on it and select make default. I can also select this one and to delete it, I can press the minus button here or right click on it and select delete. If I like one of these share destinations, but I want to make some changes to it, I can right click on it and I can duplicate it. And then I can make whatever changes I want here and I can rename it as well. Let's delete that one with the minus button. Are you enjoying this video? Is it helpful? If so, will you give it a like so other people will find it? Now, you won't be able to export anything if you don't have the right computer. In just a couple minutes, I'll show you the most important system requirements your computer needs in order to run the trial. Sometimes your destination list might get a little bit jammed. You might have too much stuff going on in here. 
So I'm gonna add a bunch of these real quick, just as examples, and we'll make it real messy, right? So now my share destination is just jammed with tons of different options. I don't want all these. I want to reset back to how it was by default. So anywhere in the destinations, right click on it and just select restore default destinations. Then press continue. It will remove all of them and I'll be back to how I was when I first installed Final Cut. Now, if I select one of these destinations and I make some changes to it, like this one, but I want to go back to how it was before, I can right click on it and I can select revert to original settings. And it's back to the good old times. Let's say I want to export one video many different ways. I wanna export it with this one, I want to export it as 1080p and then also as a file for YouTube. So how do I do that without going up here, selecting it, saving it to export, then going back again, selecting it, selecting it? Well, there's an easy way to do that. We can use what's called bundles. Drag and drop the bundle to your destination list. And now you can add these to your bundle. Just click and drag the destinations you want in your bundle. Let's put this one in there and this one. Okay, we'll close this and now I can export this project to all of those destinations in one click. I can make any changes I need to here and then I'll click next. I can name my file and then click save. If we go to desktop, we'll see I have three different versions for each destination saved. And you can rearrange these at any time. You can drag and drop them out and add a new one. And to delete a bundle, just right click on it and select delete. But that will delete all your destinations. Luckily, we can right click and we can restore default destinations. You can also batch share. So you can select several projects at once and then click on the share button or press command E for your default share. And you'll see it's going to share these three projects all at once. I can make setting changes here. I'll click next, find the spot where I want to save it and click share. And then it will export all three of them together at once. You can do the same thing for clips. So I can select a few different clips, press command E, and you can see here it's going to share these three clips. However, I can't combine projects and clips to share. I'm trying to select this clip and it won't let me do that. It has to be either projects or clips. So let's take a look at this share inspector here, this window. On the left hand side, you have a preview of the project that you're going to share. You can skim over it and quickly see what's included in your export. Below that, we have our settings. It's gonna export at 1920 by 1080 at 23.9 frames per second with stereo, audio, and then this is the length of the project, how long it's going to be. Over here is the file extension. It's going to be a .mov file when it's exported. And then this shows what the video will be compatible with, and this gives you a size estimate on the file. Down here in the bottom left corner, this is what destination you're using. And then here we have information about the export. I can click in here and make name changes if I want. I can also give it a description. I can also change who the creator is. And I can add some tags to it if I want. If we click on settings, this is where I can change how it's going to export. Here I can change things like format, the codec being used. If we change this, then we can actually change the resolution. And depending on what you select here under format and codec, you'll be able to change these others down here. We can say what action to perform after it exports, and we can include or exclude chapter markers. Let's take a look at roles. We can set it up to export each role as a separate file. This is really handy if you're giving this project to somebody else and they need to work on it or for broadcast. In this case, we have one file that will export and it contains a video and dialogue. If I click here, I can select separate files. It will export a video file and then a separate audio file. For now, I'll export it as one file and then we can do the next. So Final Cut Pro does have some system requirements. Here they are and you can check them out on Apple's website as well. 
One of the most important ones is RAM. If you're going to do some light video editing, just making videos every once in a while, Final Cut Pro recommends at least four gigabytes. I recommend at least eight gigabytes. That way you're future-proofed. If you decide to do more videos, you'll have some RAM to work with. If you're regularly editing videos, get 16 gigabytes. If you're doing this professionally and it's your job full-time, I would go for 32 gigabytes of RAM. You need at least four and a half gigs of disk space to install Final Cut Pro, but that does not take into account your project space. Video files are big and will take up a lot of room. So I recommend getting at least one terabyte hard drive. Get an SSD if you can, it is so fast. So that's what you need to run Final Cut Pro. As you dig in, you'll see you can make all kinds of videos with Final Cut, including slideshow. It's easy to create a beautiful slideshow in minutes. And there are two ways to make an automatic slideshow in Final Cut Pro. Check it out.